are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let's look at an example of that. Lazarus. Yes. That's the perfect example. Yes. Now, if you don't, I'm sure you probably know you can. If you don't, you can go to John 11 and read it. It wouldn't hurt you to go to John 11 and read it anyhow. But when Jesus had heard that Lazarus was sick on the point of death, Jesus immediately waited. That's true. Yes. His ways are still not our ways. Don't let anybody try and convince you otherwise. But when Lazarus was four days dead, Jesus came to the tomb. There's an appointed time for everything. And after telling the people who were gathered there to remove the stone from in front of that grave, this big stone that blocked the grave, yes. he cried out with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, right? Yes. Come forth. How loud? Jesus called Lazarus with a voice loud enough to penetrate the darkness of death. He calls us all by name. Yes. If you have that right relationship with God today, it's because he called you by name. And this is because this is personal. And he called you by faith, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by his word, right? Yes. yes. So Lazarus was when born again. When Jesus Christ called out, Lazarus, pow, he had new life. He was brought to life. Yes. Reformed. Okay. He came to life in the tomb. And then Jesus cried out. Uh, you know, there may not be a comma between Lazarus come forth. Maybe a full stop period right there. Okay? Because when Jesus said the name, something happened. He came to life. Yes. When then he gives him an instruction, a commandment. And he says, come forth. You see, faith has to be coupled with action. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is obedience. Yes. If Lazarus had come to life but not obeyed the command of God, he'd still be sitting in that tomb, in the darkness of that tomb. That's right. And yes, it was a command, by the way. He'd be alive but still living in the tomb, the land of the dead, as all many, too many Christians are today. That's right. Did he come forth in the image of God? No. I hear you saying, no, 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 not quite. <laughs> and you rightly say that. When the Father called Jesus out of the tomb, and then Peter and John ran to the empty tomb, right? No, not right. Because they found that it was not empty at all. Oh yes, Jesus was gone, but the tomb wasn't empty. The burial wrappings and the face cloth, the garments of death were still there. Jesus left them behind when he came forth. Lazarus, on the other hand, and we, on the other hand, came forth from the tomb bound, with, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with the cloth. That's John eleven forty four. 44. So he came out wearing the, the garments of death, the trappings of death. We all do. That's the old habits, the old traditions, the old ways of thinking. They were still on him. So he had to be unbound and set free. He had to be transformed. Mm -hmm. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, 2. So now, you see, we travel from being formed to deformed, to misinformed, to reformed, to transformed. That's five. Okay, well, I wouldn't even count. Okay. Now, transform is going to bring us, because Paul wrote to the Philippians and said, I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Philippians 1, 6, right? There's a glorious promise that God started to work in us, Amen. and God can complete that, that work, right? Now comes, I think, one of the most powerful verses in all of Scripture. By the way, they're all God-breathed. Yes, but please listen to this. 
Paul wrote to the Romans. This is this is the book that changed Christianity when Martin Luther read it, right? Mm -hmm. Paul said, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Mm -hmm. Right? Conformed. Yes. So now we've traveled from formed to deformed to misinformed to reformed to transformed, and the goal at the end is conformed. You see, I hear people say all the time, we are all born in the image of God. No, we are not. We're not made in the image of God. You're made in the image of your human father. That's why, and this, this is why Jesus said you have to be born, born again. again. Yes. You have to be born again. Because the sins of the father are visited upon, you know, generation to generation. Mankind is not made in the image of God. We are made in the image of Adam. That's, that's the fact. Now, if you think that's wrong, Prove it to me scripturally.